across over the desk uh, to join Diptyka Laurent, who's here for a look uh, through the international papers today. Uh, Dipti, uh, welcome. The US and Iran inching closer to a deal that could include a prisoner swap. Tell us more. Yeah, this information is from the Washington Post today. Uh, the Biden administration has issued a waiver uh, for banks to transfer $6 billion in frozen Iranian oil funds. It's seen as a key step to securing uh, the release of five American citizens detained in Iran, including Siamak Namazi, an Iranian U.S. citizen who's been there for eight years. It's the longest of any U.S. citizen uh, detained in uh, Iran. Now, those $6 billion funds are actually currently in South Korea, which is one of uh, Iran's um, uh, uh, which largest oil uh, customers. It's, stu it's been stuck there essentially since 2019 when the Trump administration tightened sanctions on, on Iran. Now, the timing of this deal is also significant. According to one Republican, it's egregious. It comes uh, just a few days before the one year uh, since Mahsa uh, Amini died in the custody of Iran's morality police and whose death, of course, sparked uh, nationwide protests. Now, uh, she's uh, the focus of the Tehran Times today here on the front page. Uh, where uh, the paper goes to great pains to uh, refute the manner in which she died uh, using, they say, an expert, a Texas-based expert, uh, they, w who refutes that she died from a blow to the head. Uh, the paper instead accusing the foreign-based media of propagating a lie that was passed off as unquestioned fact. OK, Dipti, well, from U.S.-Iran relations now to uh, U.K.-China uh, relations, a row then over the arrest of a man, a British man, last week, who's accused of spying for China, something he vehemently denies. Yeah, and actually it's the focus of the papers today because it's sort of uh, a source of division, but, you know, at least within the Conservative Party of in, in, in Britain. According to the British dailies, two men have been detained, one of them a researcher in his late 20s who was uh, well connected to senior members of the conservative party who alleged uh, that uh, who who allegedly worked for China now he's denied this but he's been arrested on suspicion of breaking the official secrets act the telegraph uh, here in this article noting uh, that it has uh, this uh, commons China spy has made feathers fly so to speak between Tory hawks who want the regime the Chinese regime labeled as a threat to British interests and the Tory doves including the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak who uh, sees China uh, in a softer light and particularly as the second most powerful economy in the world essential to British interests. We're going to stay in Britain uh, for your next story, uh, a very unsettling uh, piece of research, uh, a paper that's found that nearly 30 percent, an extraordinary figure, of female surgeons in the UK report being sexually assaulted by colleagues and some of them even raped. Yeah, that's right, uh, Haxi, a very damning report. According to the Times of London, the study called uh, Breaking the Silence, it's a landmark study, the paper says, is a peer-reviewed research paper that has found a, a shocking amount uh, of peer-on-peer -peer sexual assault. Of the 1,400 staff who were surveyed for the report, 30% of women, 7% of men say they were sexually assaulted by colleagues. Uh, the paper details some of those horrific experiences here in this article uh, where one uh, woman says that a male colleague rubbed himself against her and made lewd comments this just before they entered the operating room. Uh, the allegations could indicate British surgery's Me Too movement. That's what the Times of London says in this article. Uh, the, the report also pointing to a misogynistic culture in the often male-dominated domain of surgery and a shocking lack of accountability in the, uh, by the NHS. There's also a uh, high dropout rates by trainee surgeons, female trainee surgeons, uh, surgery being uh, a domain that's very hard to combine with family life. It's, uh, there's very little flexibility and in, indeed there's also a high rate of miscarriage and infertility among female surgeons. Okay, well, finally, from you, a deputy. It's a very rare sighting indeed, a spotless, that is, without spots, as opposed to extremely <laughs> clean, I'm assuming. Yeah. A spotless <laughs> young brown giraffe has been for lack of a better word, spotted in the African savannah. That's right, this giraffe, uh, it's, uh, this, it's in this article from Insider today. If you can, let me see if I can bring it up for you. It's very small, it's a, here it is. Um, 
if that error wasn't already clear enough. Uh, the giraffe was <laughs> photographed at a private game reserve in Namibia alongside, as you see, its spotted mother. According to uh, the Giraffe Conservation Foundation, it, may, it is just the fourth photographic record of such a giraffe. It's also the first ever in the wild. It comes after the late July birth of a broad, spotless giraffe at a uh, Tennessee zoo. It's not exactly uh, known why these giraffes are born without spots. It could be sort of a uh, specific genetic mutation. But as the foundation's uh, executive director said in a press release, sometimes we don't need to know everything. Let's just marvel at this uh, at this rare sighting as it is. Uh, it's also more uh, magnificent because the foundation says uh, giraffe numbers have been decimated in recent decades. There's seven countries where giraffes have gone extinct uh, on the African continent. And uh, in the African wild today, there are only 117,000 giraffes left. Lexi. Are we completely sure it's not a llama? <laughs> is my question. Just putting it out there. Dipti Kolohan. Talk with... to the foundation. <laughs> Dipti Kolohan with a look through the day's uh, international press. Thank you very much.